Welcome to Thrombotic Thrombocytopenic Purpura, TTP. This video is the last in a three-part series that will review TTP's pathophysiology, diagnosis, and management. In this video, we will cover part three, management. Over the next few minutes, we will discuss the following take-home points. To treat TTP, restore ADMTS13 activity using therapeutic plasma exchange. Interrupt microthrombi formation with an anti von Willebrand factor antibody. If present, eradicate the ADMTS13 inhibitor. Untreated TTP carries a 90% mortality rate. Therefore, with clinical suspicion and without waiting for confirmation of ADMTS13 activity levels, treatment should be initiated promptly. The first step in acute management is to restore ADMTS13 activity levels. You may recall from our earlier video that von Willebrand factor multimers that remain uncleaved due to ADMTS13 deficiency allow platelets to bind and form fibrin-rich microthrombi that block arterioles and venules. Consequently, red blood cells get fragmented in the process, forming the schistocytes that we see on the peripheral blood smear. By restoring ADMTS13 activity, ADMTS13 can bind the ultra-large von Willebrand factor multimers and cleave them, thus removing the platelet microthrombi, resolving microvascular blockage, and freeing up the microcirculation to the flow of normal, undamaged red blood cells. The most efficient way to restore ADMTS13 activity levels is using an apheresis procedure known as therapeutic plasma exchange. Therapeutic plasma exchange works to remove ADMTS13 deficient plasma and replace it with donor plasma. When treated with therapeutic plasma exchange, greater than 80% of patients recover. In congenital TTP, however, plasma infusion alone may be sufficient. The next step in acute management is to interrupt microthrombi formation. Recall that due to ADMTS13 deficiency, Ultra-large von Willebrand factor multimers remain uncleaved, promoting microthrombi formation. When we introduce anti-von Willebrand factor antibodies that recognize platelet binding sites on von Willebrand factor, these antibodies can bind to the ultra-large multimers and inhibit platelet binding. So when platelets attempt to bind, they find their binding sites already occupied. Thus, microthrombi formation is prevented. The only anti-von Willebrand factor antibody currently available for TTP treatment is caplicizumab. Caplicizumab is a humanized monoclonal antibody fragment, a bivalent variable domain-only fragment that binds to the A1 domain of von Willebrand factor. By blocking the interaction with the platelet receptor GP1B95, caplicizumab reduces microthrombi formation. In acquired TTP with inhibitor, the final treatment step is to eradicate the inhibitor. Normal functioning ADMTS13 levels remain intact until B lymphocytes with the capacity to produce antibodies become active, releasing autoantibodies into the circulation that both recognize and bind ADMTS13, clearing ADMTS13 from the circulation. To stop autoantibody production, we introduce systemic drugs known for their immunosuppression capabilities, and these drugs act in various ways to oppose the action of the B lymphocytes and deplete autoantibody production. With these autoantibodies eradicated from the system, ADMTS13 can exist at normal circulating levels. Medications commonly used for immunosuppression in acute TTP include glucocorticoids. Glucocorticoids reduce production of the ADMTS13 autoantibody and hasten recovery. Glucocorticoids are typically continued after plasma exchange is stopped. Additionally, patients may be treated with rituximab. Rituximab is a monoclonal antibody directed against CD20, a cell surface protein on mature B cells. Rituximab is typically used in select patients with severe refractory or relapse disease. Rituximab reduces the risks of exacerbation and relapse and may hasten response to therapy. In summary, to treat acute TTP, restore ADMTS13 activity using therapeutic plasma exchange and interrupt microthrombi formation 
with the anti-von Willebrand factor antibody caplicizumab. In acquired TTP patients with an ADAMTS13 inhibitor, use immunosuppressive agents such as glucocorticoids and rituximab to eradicate the inhibitor. This brings us to the end of our three-part series on thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura. ADAMTS13 goes missing. <laughs>